worst, the worst, bitch. It 
is ongoing and continually, uh, co continually structurally supported does not mean it's conscious. So when we're talking about racism being systematic, it is not the fact that I hold a, a, a person, a white person holds a position of power and can pre prevent a person of color, a black person, from getting that position. The systematic part is the fact that I can live my entire life if I'm a white person and never interact with a black person and be completely fine. Meaning I can thrive, be very successful, raise children, go to church, go to concerts, and never have to deal with a black person if I choose not to. That's not black reality. So we're talking about systemic, systematic. It doesn't have to be conscious now. Dehumanization. Now I use that word intentionally as well. Dehumanization. That's the very core of what it means to be alive. <laughs> Dehumanization. Taking that away from you, stripping that. What are we watching? What are we here? What's this a picture of? You know you're getting a quiz. <laughs> What's this a picture of? A rally. It's a march. Ooh. Look, I don't know who I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell somebody. <laughs> this right here, this picture is from, I want to say the year 67. <laughs> 67. And you have the Poor People's March happening in Memphis. And the Poor People's March could be talking about wages, could be talking about their employers, could be talking about all these other things regarding to the system of regarding the system of poverty. However, the problem was for them, as it continues to be for Black men today, was that y'all don't recognize me as a human being. So this march here, these signs, they all say, "I am a man. I just want you to recognize me as a human being," and that's what you're not doing. So we're talking about the system of dehumanization is taking away that very core essence of what it means to be alive. My research is around this concept of human dignity. Dignity being supported by these measures of um, autonomy, self-determination, identity, access, merit, and humanity. When you do not have access to those core concepts of human beingness, you're, face of a system, you're facing a system of dehumanization. Where at every challenge that you might not be respected as a human being. And I don't know if you really understand that kind of core, essential human denial that is a part of the system of racism. Wow. The fact that I can see you as black before I see you as person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about in the system of racism. Go ahead. Power. Power is the ability to define reality and convince others that it's its own. Who's that? Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's Dr. Wayne Nobles who said that. Power is the ability to define reality and convince others that it is their own. We know, right, because we're all smart people who care about stuff in this room, we, we know that our skin color doesn't determine much else other than whether or not I need to stay in the sun and how often I need to moisturize. <laughs> That's what we really know, right? We know that to be fundamentally true. Power, the ability to, to define reality, is that we have been so effed up <laughs> that a reality has been defined through the system of racialization that we have so deeply accepted that we're only working within it in order to find a way to define humanity in a way that we've been so dehumanized. So it's a system that's been set up that intentionally denies who we are, but because of the power structure, we have to work within that in order to define or bring back our sense of humanity. So power, be, having that ability to define reality, convince others it is their own, is the ability to say that locks are unprofessional. It's the ability to say that, and I see this every single day, it's the ability to say that this short skirt that this white girl is wearing versus short skirt that this person of color is wearing is problematic and over-sexualized, mm -hmm. and she's cute. Mm -hmm. Black thighs matter. <laughs> Power is the ability to define reality and convince other people of your own. This is why the words black power are scary in a system of racism. Because black power <laughs> is challenging. It's challenging what is fundamentally true in our society is that it's to be black is to be powerless. 
So if you're going to be out here claiming black power, oh, you got some nerve, you're starting to problem. You're claiming space, you're claiming a dignity that you're not supposed to have. Black power is claiming yourself as human being, <laughs> claiming yourself as self-determined, and claiming yourself as ability to negotiate this world on your own terms. That's not what black reality is either. In comfort, racism is about maintaining a system of comfort. <laughs> Now I'm in a room full of woke friends and family. <laughs> and so I know that we have engaged in conversations either with peers, co-workers, on Facebook or social media where something like this rhetoric has honestly come up. This is when somebody says something, and I'm going to say this word, stupid, as this black person was racist towards me. Were they? They called you a mean name. They, they were upset with you. And now they're racist. I work at a local high school, well, name any names. <laughs> I work at a local high school, they did a, a climate survey about understanding race. The demographics of the school is about 38% African American, there's 10% um, or so that find themselves either de developing a brown, yellow, red, or some combination thereof, and then the rest is Caucasian or white. In the, cu the cultural survey, you have all the students of color self-identifying themselves saying, we need to talk about race, race is an issue, blah, 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 blah. You have the rest of the students split between two factions. One, it's not an issue, everybody's fine. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and the other issue, if the black kids weren't so racist towards us, we would be better off. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what black kids being racist to you in the school building means. <laughs> they look at you. The, look at what are those? That's what they did. And you felt some kind of way? <laughs> they did it to me too. <laughs> the system of racism is made to uphold and cushion and hug on whiteness. It's made to say whiteness is so okay. And this isn't white people, this is whiteness. It's a very different thing. It's to make it so comfortable. It's like a comfy couch to sit in. And anybody to say, could you move over, please, is a problem. <laughs> That's what the system of racism does. Right. It allows us to think about whiteness if we have that sort of privilege in that manner. So racism, those four components, um, dehumanization, power, comfort, the systemic nature of it. Um, create a form of violence, structural violence. And so what Brother David was talking about, Brother Muhammad was speaking of here, is this idea that this doesn't happen on accident, <laughs> that there's a structure in place that allows us to persist. And when we use the term structural violence, we're talking about the denial of citizenship to people within the nation. So the denial of citizenship means equal protection under the law. Next slide. So here we are. You know what this picture is? <laughs> they're on the Cali Center steps. Do you see them loaded guns that they're standing with? Mm -hmm. the, the California, our favorite go our favorite president, also favorite governor, Reagan, when he was in office, <laughs> was in California and they were all guns, everything. Carry guns everywhere. Guns are great. We love guns. Da -da -da -da. So some black people got some guns and started right up into the White House, I mean to the Senate House, the Capitol House. This is legal, right? You know they passed a law a year later that said there's no more public carrying of weapons. We're done with that. <laughs> we see you black people trying to think you have some sort of power, some sort of humanity, some sort of equal protection under the law. We have to make sure to change that because any notion of you being as human as I am is a denial of my own humanity and I can't have that. That's what the system of racism is. Right here, the 14th Amendment, no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the law. Meaning, instead of coming up to my car, being unhappy with me and shooting me, you should ask me a couple questions. So the issue that we're talking about in regards to Black Lives Matter are not a matter of coincidental individual um, incidents uh, where a person thought wrong or trigger mis shot or any of that. That is not what this is. 
That is not what this is. That is not what this is. What it is is the ability to say that this constitution and this citizenship that we're supposed to get just because we were born here has its limitations. Right. If you are not of a, if you are not of the ilk, the respectability politics that Lazarus was talking about earlier, you are not of my ilk. Whether that's race, creed, color, religion, or whatever, that means I have some reason to question who you are and whether or not I can treat you like a human being or an animal. If you look at some of the testimony, and I challenge you to do some of that if you haven't, any of the hundreds, hundreds of cases of police brutality, it always comes down to fear. Right. And I was afraid because I fear for my life because a black person was present. Right, right. Right. I thought he was Luke Cage. <laughs> I thought he was Luke Cage. It was a 12 year old. It was a 12 year old boy. I remember when I was in high school, I went to Milwaukee Lutheran High School. At the time, um, our, our student body was about 6% African American based on their enrollment. Ask any white student there, they say it's 30%. Easy. 20%. Easy. Where did we come from? Is the idea the same idea of why people, black people can't be in groups anywhere, even on this campus? Even on this campus, even out there in, the, in, in that union, okay. black people in any sort of group also automatically multiply times six. Yeah. We are somehow yeah. like the Power Rangers. If you are together, you are therefore getting stronger and therefore are attempting to do something. And if only black people were as strong and as fearless as white people feared us to be, we would not have the planet that we do have now. But we are. We're just also as spiritually grounded that keeps us from killing off everybody. Try to kill us. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Next slide. So hip-hop was birthed out of and continued to respond to systemic violence against blacks and other people of color. Hip-hop came out of New York, came out of what, 1520, Cedric Avenue? <laughs> and it, it came out of, if we're going to think about structural violence, it came out of the project, the housing project, that are part of systemic violence because we have to put you all in an area <laughs> that keeps you from the rest of the city that exists because of the laborers moving from the south post-emancipation, moving to the north and getting industrial jobs, which happened because there was slavery in the south, which happened because of the transatlantic slave trade, which happened because white people, white Europeans came to Africa and said, because you're a different color, you're an issue. So when we're talking about <laughs> hip hop, it was worked out of that. Subscribe, bitch!